So what is considered a full retirement age? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about in this video today is what's the re full retirement age, whether you're talking about social security or maybe your full retirement age. So we talk about full retirement age, usually we're talking about social security, but is there a way to actually do it faster? And how do we know if that's the best way to go? What's the best option for you specifically about what age you should do it in? And the great thing is guys, that although you're always told you can do it in your 60s, you can actually do it sooner if you start today and if you actually reject a lot of the traditional financial advice you'll see on Google and everywhere else, we're gonna give you something different here. So be sure to hang on with us because we're gonna dig into how you can actually do this faster than that full retirement age. All right, so usually when you're looking up full retirement age, I'm guessing you're probably looking up that social security income, right? Where do you get that full benefit of your social security plan? Well, the truth is it's at age 67. Age 67 is that full retirement age for social security. Now you can take social security as soon as age 62. However, you will take a fraction of what you can actually get at the full retirement age. Now, why is the government incentivizing you to wait longer? Come on, you know why. The government's broke, that's why. They know that social security is under fire, it's un in trouble. In fact, between the 2024 and the 2028 elections, it's gonna be a serious topic of conversation with politicians because they know money is running out right now. So they're incentivizing you to wait longer because they know if you can wait till 67, you got less years to take it. And here's the problem with this, right? I don't know about you, but my crystal ball broke a long time ago. I have no clue how long I'm gonna be on this planet. And you probably don't either. And as a result, I mean, even though I'd like to be here for years and years and years, that could be a risk. And so many people will say, well, if I don't live as long, maybe I should start taking it now while I'm younger. Well, others might say, well, I plan to live longer. Maybe taking it later and get that full benefit will be better. And the truth is we just don't know, right? But there are some things in your planning you can do to make it different. Now, this is talking about social security. You may not be relying or counting on social security. You might be wondering what's full retirement for me and what's considered the normal retirement age. Now, we always hear people throw out the number 65. And I'll tell you, more and more, we're seeing people have a very different number. Now, usually it's in your 60s, but I've actually heard more now, as they've done more studies and surveys, more of us are actually starting to say up to 70, sometimes into our 70s that we're working. Because let's be honest, the typical retirement planning you get from financial advisors hasn't been working. So as a result, if you don't have enough money, what do you do? You work longer. And so we're starting to see more baby boomers working into their 70s now instead of retiring in their 60s. We're also seeing the Gen Xers are also planning to work into their 70s. Now what's fascinating is this, when you get to millennials, millennials actually don't wanna retire. They're saying, you know what? We actually don't really care about retirement. We just want more freedom and flexibility now and later so that we can kind of do what we want later on. But maybe we wanna keep working because we don't want really see ourselves stop working. Everybody has a different response for this, right? The truth is you have your life, you have your goals, you have your timeline. Now, the one thing I don't want you to do is to pick an age because you feel that there's no hope, right? Maybe you think you'll never stop working. That was the one thing that got me into the financial advising business when I used to be a financial advisor initially early on. I used to hear my dad growing up, you know, things like, hey, I can't afford this. Money doesn't grow in trees. We think I am made of money. But he'd also say things like, hey, you know what? I think my job will literally kill me. I think I will die because of the stress at my work. Now this guy had strokes in his 40s, heart attacks in his 50s, right? We actually thought too, we're like, man, if he makes the age 70, he'll be lucky. So for him, he was thinking he would never have any time. The whole thing that inspired me to become a financial advisor in the first place was because I thought, not only could I learn about money for myself, but what if I can even help shave a couple years of his life back by getting him to actually retire before he died? And so that was my goal. But only going in, as I was a financial advisor for four years, I started to see the, the real true writing on the wall, which was people weren't retiring. You know, they weren't making enough or having enough in retirement when they got there. I realized this when I sat down with my dad. I sat down with him for the first time ever when I was about four years as a financial advisor. And now understand, my dad was like the penny pinching saver. He was not a big spender. He was saving everything he could. He was stuffing his 401k, getting the match from his employer. He was also, he had paid off all of his debt in 18 years. He was mortgage free, debt free. He had done everything that guys like Dave Ramsey teach you to do on the air all the time. However, I looked at his numbers. I said, dad, you're 61 years old today. He was just a year away from being able to take social security. I said, you're 61 years old today. If you want to retire today, you better hope you die in five years because that's when you're going to run out of money. He's like, well, that's not what I wanted to hear, Chris. Thanks, Mr. Sunshine. You got anything better for me? I said, well, no, I don't. I actually don't know what I can do for you because 
you did everything right according to what I teach as a financial advisor. Now I could have thrown them in this kind of stock thing or this mutual fund or that or annuities or whatnot, but the truth is I couldn't guarantee success. And him being my own father, I didn't want to throw him into something that then would tank or lose money later on, which by the way, guess what happened? This is in 2005 I'm talking to him. Two years later, the market starts tanking for a couple of years, right? And it took years for it to recover. I'm glad I didn't actually t try to get him into other stock market things, but I didn't have a good answer for him. And this is where it kind of led me to my own life, my own journey. This is actually what led me to quitting being a financial advisor, because if it didn't work for him, who was like the model example of what somebody should do, like a financial advisor's dream come true, yet when you start to look at the reality, it wasn't enough, not because he didn't save enough, but because the vehicles he was using weren't good enough. The things that financial advisors give you aren't good enough. So if you're trying to use the traditional 401ks and IRAs, just plan on you probably will be in your 70s, which is what happened to my dad. My dad actually ended up working into his 70s until health forced him to retire. And that is not a good place to be. You don't want to get to the point where you have to quit working because you have to quit working. You want to be in a place where you get to do it on your terms. You get to choose your timeline and do it your way. But if you do the traditional retirement way, you will be at least into your 60s, if not your 70s, because that's what's been shown over and over again. By the way, real stats, Fidelity came out with stats saying that of 45 million IRAs and 401ks that they have with their clients, only 810,000, that's about 1.8%, have at least a million dollars. And remember, when you're in retirement, you're only supposed to pull off 3% a year. So that means they people can only pull off 30,000 a year, which is why one third of them surveyed, 35% surveyed, said it would take a miracle to be able to retire. They don't even think they can even do it. And I guarantee there's more than 1.8% of them that are actually in retirement years that still think they couldn't retire. So when you have those kind of reality stats coming out, you start to wonder, is there a better way? And the answer is yes. And that's what I discovered for myself. When I quit being a financial advisor, I started looking for people that actually had done it, even retired early in their 20s and 30s. And guess what they did? It was real estate investing. That's the one thing they consistently all did. They had real estate in their portfolios. Now, it wasn't just that people were going to buy the house down the street. These people were sometimes actively buying real estate. However, I knew that it had to be a better way so I started passively investing in real estate. I tried to do it actively the first time, but it just didn't really give me as much benefit as when I was starting to produce and increase my money that I could save and put away and then use that to go with other investors. And especially with investors you can trust. That's the hard thing is that there are so many people out there willing to take your money, but not all of them are able to give you your money back because they're not good investors. That's the thing. I get people that say all the time like, hey, Chris, I've done real estate since, since 2018 and done a great job. I say, well, wonderful. Talk to me in 2030 <laughs> when you're actually, when you actually got a few more gray hairs after doing this for a little while. Or they might have done some kind of real estate investing. Maybe they did single family homes, but then they go to try to do self storage. No, that, those are two very different things. Even apartment buildings are not the same as single family homes. So they're not the same thing. It's like starting over from scratch from year one. I like people that have at least 12 to 15 years of experience, meaning they've gone through one full market cycle. Like they've actually dealt with the last recession, came out of it stronger or wiser, even if they lost some money back then, but came out of it with much wiser ability to make more money now because they've learned from those hard times. Those are the people I like to trust if I'm gonna put my money with somebody else. And that's what I recommend too, is like look for people that actually have a great track record, have integrity, they always pay their people back, even when it might be hurtful to them. Those are the people I always go for. Now, there's lots of different ways you can do in real estate investing. I'll tell you from my real life experience, I not only retired when I was 28, but then of course the recession hit with the great recession. So in my 30s, I was going broke, but by 39, I was able to dig out of my debt hole without filing for bankruptcy, and I was able to retire once again. How did I do it? I did not invest in the stock market. I avoided that completely, right? I didn't care about the full retirement age. I didn't care about trying to hit that age 67, 65, or 60 anything for that matter. I knew for myself, I wanted to do things while I was alive. I wanted to do things while I was young. You know, do things while my kids were still around. I mean, how many times do people sacrifice so many years of their life to only miss out on their kids growing up because they're trying to do that for a future date? That's just not great. And so I did that. I actually went and not, instead of doing the full retirement age, I retired sooner by having enough passive income coming in. I did things like different types of rentals, but I did turnkey rentals instead of just typical rentals that people buy, where somebody else manages the property for me. I end up doing things like in the apartment space, like apartment investing, having a shared ownership in apartments. You know, I've did things like raw land and business partnerships there and business interests and things like that. Did things with like oil and gas. I mean, there's so many ways you have real estate backing up your investments and pays you cash flow each and every month, even lending money. 
I had, a, I had a friend that said, hey, listen, I'll pay you 15% a year if you lend me $50,000. I said, great, I'll do it. Guys, understand that even 15% a year, even on $100,000 is $15,000 a year. Not 3,000 a year that your financial advisor would recommend, 15,000. Even if I got paid 10%, which is what most of the network have, 10% is still $10,000 a year, way better than 3,000 a year. So that's the thing, you can make so much more money with less. I wish I had understood these things earlier so I could help my dad get to a, a better retirement before the age of 72, right? Actually, it's a much earlier retirement, a better place to be, but I didn't. I didn't know then, but I know now, and you have that choice for yourself. You can actually do something different, but it requires you to, again, do something different. I mean, it requires you to stop listening to the crappy financial advisors that get paid for you to put money with them forever, and they never want you to pull the money out. They want you to live it with them forever. Don't do that kind of stuff. Instead, focus instead on how can I get the life that I want to design today. If you want to create, figure out how much passive income you could create in your life and maybe even retire earlier, check out moneyripples.com, go to the passive income calculator and see what your number is. Let's see what you could actually create in the next 12 months with passive income that you can reinvest year after year to build up your passive income and compound your income rather than waiting 40 years to compound your interest. Check that out at moneyripples.com now.